in the previous unit we created this basin model for Cedar Creek let's explore what we have so to see what we have we are going to click on the plus sign here next to Cedar Creek and after you do that you will see all the sub basins and reaches that are created so if you want you can adjust the height of the watershed explorer window here so let's click on any of the sub basins so i'll click on sub basin 6 and you will see here some of the changes that we made earlier in the program settings so for last method we have scs curve number for unit hydrograph we have scs unit hydrograph similar to if you click on reach 2 or any reach you will see that there is musking a method that we specified for routing and if you click on any of these methods you will see that all the parameters do not have any values at this point so this is something we are going to explore later how to input these parameters for these methods so we can see here how many sub basins and reaches we have we can count so the maximum sub basin number that I see is 17 and the maximum reach number that I see here is 8. So this is one way to do it. The other way to do it is go to parameters and then you can click on sub basin area for example. So here right now it says initial selection so you can see all elements and that way you will see all the sub basins here. So you can see we have 17 sub basin and then you can see all the area associated with it. You can sort these rows alphabetically. So again you can see 17. The other thing you will see is that some of these sub basins have very small areas. So for example sub basin 15 has less than 1 square kilometer Subbasin 9 is also less than 1 square kilometer and subbasin 17 is only 1.7. So what we can do is we can merge some of these subbasins with neighboring subbasins and get rid of those small areas. So let's see how we can do this merge. So remember we have subbasin 9, we have subbasin 17 and we have sub basin 15. Now these numbers may be different for you but hopefully you will see similar areas when you do this for your data set. So what we are going to do next is we are going to merge some of the sub basins to get rid of these smaller sub basins. So if you click on sub basin 9 here that does get highlighted so right now the highlight color is barely visible we can actually also change that in the program settings so let's go ahead and do that so go to tools program settings and then we will go to basin map and right now the highlight color is light gray this which is why we cannot see it so let's change that to let's say green and say OK and let's select sub basin 9 so it is highlighted in green again because it is so small it is hard to see so let's zoom in and you will see sub basin 9 here so we can either combine or merge sub basin 9 with this sub basin which is sub basin 8 or we can merge it with sub basin 13 so let's go ahead and merge sub basin 8 and sub basin 9 so what you do is you select one sub basin so in this case it is sub basin 8 you push the shift button and then you select again sub basin 9 and then you go to GIS and merge elements now the merge elements tool only works when you select two sub basins so if you want to select more than three then you have to do it first two and then use the third one so we selected sub basin 8 and 9 and merge 
and if I select it now you can see that it got a new name which is subbasin 18 okay so 8 and 9 got combined and we now have a new combined or merged subbasin which is 18 now let's combine the other two so we have subbasin 15 which is also very small so if you select it here you can barely see it but it's near the outlet so this is our subbasin 15 so what we can do is we can combine this with let's say subbasin 10 or subbasin 14 so subbasin 10 is smaller so, so let's go ahead and combine subbasin 10 and subbasin 15 so you select those using the shift key you go to GIS and merge elements okay so finally we have one more left which is subbasin 17 which is also close to the outlet so what we can do now is we can combine subbasin 17 with either subbasin 5 or subbasin 8 so it got a new name subbasin 8 which is the merged basin from the previous step so we can either combine this and this or this and this so it's up to us so let's go ahead and combine this and this and go to GIS and merge elements and that is now merged so let's zoom in and see so this now has a new name 9 so if you remember earlier we had combined 8 and 9 and when those were combined the new name was subbasin 18 and when we combined these now we have 8 and 9 so it's a little bit strange naming but as long as we have these merge worked out we are in good shape so let's go ahead and unselect all the subbasins and we can go back and look at the areas now so go to parameters subbasin area and you can see we got rid of the subbasins that had very small areas so after the merge we end up with 14 subbasins and these are the areas associated with them so in the next unit we will see how we can assign parameters to all our subbasins and reaches and extracting some of these parameters is tedious right now in HHMS and we will learn how to do that so save your project and this is it for this unit.